How you doing everyone? In this video we're going to finish up this stone veneer sitting wall. We got some more stones to cut and install onto our block. Then we got to mortar the joints and install the cap. If you didn't see the previous video where we poured the footing, installed the concrete block and started the veneer, there's a link in the description below. But let's just get right into the day guys. So I had discussed in the previous video about when you're doing stone veneer, sometimes you'll start fitting a stone for a certain spot and then realize you're not too happy with it. So that's kind of what happened with this one. I realized it might have been a little bit of a better fit on the left side instead of the right. And that's just the way it goes with any kind of stone work. It's, it's a meticulous type of work. And the most, the most important thing you can do is step back and look. You need to place something look at it see what maybe might work better and then make those corrections I, I go back and forth with these stones at least a few times and almost every side of the stone is gonna get cut it's almost impossible to find a perfect stone to just fit in the spot that you want you need to customize it so be patient have a good eye don't be afraid to take your time on a piece I mean some of these stones can take me upwards from to 10 to 15 minutes per stone just to get cut never mind apply it so that's the way it goes don't be afraid to have that patience and that that standard this kind of this kind of work can really be ruined when you don't have that patience and you just start slapping stones on so take a step back look at it make your adjustments and don't be satisfied until it looks really good to you. So now that I got my bottom, my sides, and my top all set, I need to make a joint line on the center of the stone below it. I can't fit a, a little small piece to the right of this stone. So I'm going to take off a few inches, and that's going to center off my joint line. With stonework, your joints are very important. You don't want lines running from the bottom to the top of your project. You don't want four-way intersections. There's a saying with round stone and field stone work that you want one on top of two, two on top of one. Following that method will keep your joint staggered and give it a really natural look the way that field stone should be. Okay, you're going to see here in a minute how I mark the tops of pieces I get them set up I use a little th piece of three-quarter stone to just kinda hold it in place but then I'm gonna mark the back of the the veneer at the top of the block level and that's just gonna give you a really accurate spot to cut it you can see it right there you just make a line on the back of the stone where the top of the block is and you rip it down
Back again, Benny. Back again. We just uncovered everything. It's been here for a couple days. Yesterday we did not come here. It was brutally cold, which isn't good to do stonework in. <laughs> but it's pretty nice and warm today. And we're styling. Styling in the front. Got a few more pieces to make. Benny's making his way. Wow, way up. <laughs> Cut. <laughs> Benny's making his way over here. I love this uh, New England like field stone, Benny, huh? Yeah, it looks mint. It's beautiful, man. We need some practice on this hole, don't we? A little bit. We right. tried a little bit the other day. None of them really got that close. <laughs> yeah, this is a better day for it. <laughs> but I mean, after the first couple shots and the, the discs were covered in snow and our hands were absolutely numb, I mean, yeah. I think we can give ourselves a little bit of a break yeah. on that. <laughs> Cut ourselves some slack. Cut ourselves some slack. Caution tape kind of makes you nervous too. Yeah, that tape is <laughs> definitely gets in your head for gets sure. In your head. Yeah, I hope I don't hit the tape. <laughs> So I'm starting over here in this corner, Ben's in that corner, and we're going to both work towards the uh, wood side over here. That way, this side's going to be done, and once that's done, I'm going to actually be mortaring or pointing the joints.
Well, we're moving along here on this project. Let me know in the comment section below what you think of the veneer. Like I said a couple times now, this is probably my favorite style stonework. Just really um, old colonial looking, in my opinion. And the New England uh, field stone colors are just beautiful together. It's beautiful color blend. You get the tans, the blues, the darker grays, the lighter grays. Just a nice mixture. But all I do to mortar these joints is a couple different trowels. I use my rectangled off like margin trowel to get the mortar in the joints. And then I push them in and seal them off a little bit more with the pointed trowel. And then you see me here with just a construction sponge cleaning up the edges. Uh, you can use those mortar bags to get the joints in, but the consistency of the mortar that you need for those bags just wasn't going to work on this project. Here's what it looks like after it's all cleaned up. That Those uh, mortar joints are going to lighten up a lot. They'll be a, a lot lighter gray than that. Here we are, another day. No Benny today though, just me. Finishing this wall up on my own. It's looking sweet. So this is a couple days after we set the mortar. And it's definitely pretty cured. Back is done. Benny did an excellent job. Just got to point all these joints now. It's a sweet view right there. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get right into mixing some water, get these joints pointed, then it's time to put caps on. These are our capstones. They're made out of gray granite, and the style is bush hammered. Bush hammered means that it's naturally split either by a machine press or by hand. And it gives it a nice natural look on all the edges. It's just nice and textured. They're beautiful capstones, but they're not the easiest to work with because each one varies in size a little bit. Okay, so first thing we want to do, you can see these stones are getting a little drier. But you want to make sure the stones that you're going to be pointing are somewhat damp because you see that it makes a little bit of a mess and if your stones dry that mortar doesn't come off so easy when you're using the sponge so getting the surface of the stone wet or damp not too not super wet because then it'll make the mortar bleed but just damp This is the pointed trial I was telling you about. We're going to use this after to scrape the edges and push the mortar in nice. And this is our margin trowel. We're going to use this for basically filling the joints. These little cement pans you can get at, at Home Depot Lowe's or anything like that too. They're pretty cheap. But a little trick for this when you're doing the pointing, you want to push it all to one corner and you almost want to form it. But you're going to form it at an angle like this. And we're going to scoop and push up. And we have some mortar on our trowel now. That's going to be easy to fill that joint. We can just turn the, mort the trowel upside down, push it in. Now you can see we didn't get it, it close to as far back as we need it. So we need even more. So you can even get a bigger clump. You want to keep pushing until it pushes out on you. See, that's really the best one right there. When you get ones like that, it's good because it's going to a point, and that point's going to go right into the joint, like that. And you get that whole trowel's worth on there. So 
you really need to push this mortar in because the problem is if you don't push it in and it doesn't adhere to the block and fill those joints tightly it's going to be pockets where water can get in and that's how stone veneer most commonly gets popped off of the surface that it's adhered to so you really need to tuck these joints in tight and you really don't need to worry too much about the mess that's what that sponge is for when you dampen the stone down like i showed you you got a good amount of working time to where you can get it jointed and then cleaned off before it stains the the actual stone Now that we got our joints filled, we're going to use our pointed trowel just to make sure that everything's pushed in nice and tight. And we're going to clean up the excess buildup on the stones around it. And what that's going to do is ensure that we have enough mortar that's touching the block and surrounding the stone. Then we're going to pull out our construction sponge. You can get this in any kind of home improvement store. And we're just going to clean up the edges. But as you're cleaning up the edges, what I like to do with, with mortar joints is kind of dab the, dab the mortar with the sponge. It seals it up nice and gives it a little bit of a texture, which looks good in the end, I think. It right there guys almost done so I really wanted to buy a full piece of granite for this sitting wall but any of you hardscapers or landscape construction contractors in, in Massachusetts or maybe around the country knows that this past couple years have been tough to get natural stone I think just because of the the quarries they haven't been producing as much because of the, the virus. But this is what I had to settle on, especially this late in the year. The, none of my uh, stone suppliers were getting more stone until spring. And unfortunately, you can see at the, the right, I had one piece that was probably about a quarter inch thicker than the rest. So I had to try to manipulate that in there. I did a little bit of chiseling to try to make it uh, match perfect, but it wasn't exactly perfect and that's what i mean by these bush hammered pieces they just they vary in size a little bit but i'm just cutting the sides off so that these things can fit nice and flush to make it look like it's as it's one piece as much as possible sometimes in this industry you just have to be creative and work with the materials that are available it's not always going to be a perfect situation unfortunately okay they're looking pretty good nice and tight but again, that, that one stone at the end is just a fatty, man. So I had to lift the other stones up to meet that height. The mortar that I used for the stone veneer is this Ardex X77, which is for vertical applications. And I'm using this X32 for underneath the, the caps it's for a horizontal application. But I'm putting as little amount of mortar as possible under this big one here. I ended up chiseling the edges to try to match it in the best as possible, but um, you'll see in a minute here what it looks like. I didn't film the entire install of the caps, but you can kind of understand the point. And here's the final product. That big one sits a little bit lower than the rest, but the top matches pretty nicely, and that's about all you can do in that kind of situation. But let me know in the comment section below what you guys think. Any feedback is welcome. This certainly isn't one of the biggest installs I've ever done, but I had such a blast doing this. The meaning behind it, just the fact that it's for a disc golf course. Ben and I love playing disc golf. It was such a fun project to do. 
and we're looking forward to doing a lot more T pads here at this course and hopefully at others. If you want to see how we installed the T pad and you haven't yet, check out the playlist. There's a link in the description below and it has every video from beginning to end on this project. So check that out. And if you haven't hit that like and subscribe, make sure to do so. Till the next one, guys. Peace. <laughs>